This is Daily Armenia, CivilNet's Daily News Digest. Here's what you need to know today. Prosecutors in Azerbaijan have concluded their preliminary criminal investigations into the eight former senior Nagorno-Karabakh officials held in Baku, paving the way for trials to begin. Indictments will soon be submitted to the courts, Prosecutor General Kamran Aliyev told the state-run APA news agency yesterday, without providing a timeline or any additional details. During last September's forcible displacement of Armenians from Nagorno-Karabakh, Azerbaijan detained eight former senior Nagorno-Karabakh officials and has since held them in detention, mostly on terrorism or war crimes charges. They are among the dozens of Armenians currently held in Azerbaijan, including prisoners of war. In related news, representatives of the International Committee of the Red Cross paid their latest visit to Armenians held in Azerbaijan earlier this month, a spokesperson confirmed today. There was another meeting with all the Armenians who are detained in Azerbaijan and whose names were confirmed to us by the Azerbaijani authorities, Zara Amatuni, told the Russian state-run Sputnik news agency. There were no other details made available. Meanwhile, in Yerevan, a majority of former Nagorno-Karabakh lawmakers yesterday slammed the Armenian government for what they called discrimination against Nagorno-Karabakh Karabakh Armenians, just days after a raid on Nagorno-Karabakh's permanent representation in the Armenian capital. We call on the Armenian government to refrain from manifestations of inciting violence, hatred, and enmity. For quite some time already, the Armenian authorities have been applying repression and discriminatory treatment against Artsakh citizens, the lawmakers said in a joint statement. Continuing, they said last Friday's raid on Nagorno-Karabakh's representative office crossed the line in terms of both legal and moral values and throws into doubt Armenia's democratic credentials and the independence of the country's judiciary. During the raid, officers broke into the compound and seized former Nagorno-Karabakh President Samvel Shahramanyan's car. Since last month, law enforcement has brought criminal charges against at least three exiled Nagorno-Karabakh mayors, all of whom had taken part in protests against the Armenian government or otherwise expressed their support for them. Armenia's investigative authorities have opened a murder probe after one service member died yesterday in unclear circumstances. In a statement today, the investigative committee confirmed it is looking into the sudden death of David Nersisyan, a soldier posted to Armenia's southernmost Sunik region who reportedly fell ill and fainted at his military base and was then taken to the hospital where he died. It marks Armenia's latest non-combat army death. According to a tally kept by Armenia's Prosecutor General's office, the majority of deaths in the army last year did not take place in combat. Only 19 of the 54 soldiers lost last year were killed in action. More died in accidents, including accidents related to mishandling weapons or by suicide. In other news, Palestine's Prime Minister has personally thanked Armenia's top diplomat for what he called Armenia's principled approach days after Armenia recognized Palestine in a historic move that has prompted anger in Israel. Mohammed Mustafa, who also serves as Palestine's foreign minister, expressed his gratitude to Ararat Mirzoyan in a phone call yesterday, according to a readout from the Armenian Foreign Minister's office. Armenia continues to support a two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, it added. Last Friday, Armenia formally recognized the state of Palestine, a move swiftly welcomed by a number of Arab countries most notably Saudi Arabia, as well as by Turkey. That contrasted sharply with the reaction in Israel, which summoned Armenia's ambassador for what it described as a harsh reprimand and threatened unspecified serious long-term consequences for Israel-Armenia relations. In related news, the Associated Press yesterday reported that the heads of the Armenian Apostolic, Catholic, and Greek Orthodox churches in Jerusalem wrote a joint letter to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu this week to raise concerns over renewed moves by the city of Jerusalem and a number of Israeli municipalities to force churches to pay property taxes. We we believe these efforts represent a coordinated attack on the Christian presence in the Holy Land, the spiritual leaders were quoted as saying. Under long-standing tradition, churches in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories do not pay taxes on their substantial land holdings. There was no immediate response from the Israeli government. You can also check out our latest interview with Mary Papazian, co-founder of the Armenian Society of Fellows, who sat down with us this week to discuss efforts to develop Armenia's scientific research capabilities, review strategies to make Armenia a regional innovation leader, and stress the importance of encouraging collaboration between Armenia and the diaspora. You can find our full conversation with Mary Papazian at civilnet.am or through the link in the video description below. And if you speak Armenian, you can also take a look at our latest interview with former Economy Minister Vahan Karobyan, who joined us this week for his first interview since he was released from house arrest earlier this month. Karobyan talked in depth about the criminal charges he continues to face as part of a sweeping government corruption probe, which he denies. You can find our exclusive conversation with Vahan Karobyan at civilnet.am or through the link in the video description below. 
And finally, the civil net number of the day is 296,690. That's Armenia's average monthly salary in drams as of last month, according to the latest figures from the country's state-run statistical agency. That sum, equivalent to about 764 US dollars, represents a year-on-year -year increase of 6.7%. And as always, please follow CivilNet for the latest news and independent reporting from our contributors on the ground here in Armenia.